I'm making a class. What I'm going to do is demonstrate class rep and show how it uh, uses stored compiler information. First of all, I'm going to fill in this record. Terminator. Okay, now uh, class rep will get this the it accesses the symbol table the compiler uses and it will display so it's kind of like uh, like a IDE debugger but it's command line driven um, no it has the class it has the structures for pretty much everything so uh, now a similar feature is uh, there's a metadata which when you traverse the structure you can access um, other data um, this uh, this is a class declaration and you can put an, an arbitrary uh, metadata with a value and then you can access it when you traverse the structure that the compiler built so in this case maybe you want a standard way to print fields the the string or maybe you want default values now I guess in C++ you can already handle that but in this um, this is not quite C++ but you can have default values or any kind of data up until the semicolon it has name and then value pairs uh, now one place it uses that is in forms um, you can see here it uh, if you do a form then it can um, you can do the format string and tell the width and stuff now we're going to look at uh, some features of the documents now the the form we just looked at had a data widget now we're going to look at a text widget with a callback now we saw earlier how the uh, the LTFD and some other widgets are um, are dynamic now um, every time it refreshes the screen it calls a callback when it gets to this point and the callback function supplies the text that it's displaying now uh, a similar thing is uh, is called uh, define string um, define load okay uh, let's say we have uh, we're gonna make a define string callback uh, so we control L goes to the uh, widget selection we did a text widget and the define string we want is test so um, right here right here whoops why is it doing that
Okay, there it is. I don't know why it did that. Anyway, uh, the, there's a text widget with the define string, and the, the define value is test. And, oh, I know why. It's because it's not defined. Uh, it, that's why it's doing that. Now if we do define test, okay, suddenly we have that word appear there. That's because it looked up the value in the compiler symbol table for test, and then it uh, got that text. Now define load, we can redefine it too. Um, it's dynamic. That's how I show the age of the uh, of loose those in uh, the line count and stuff with uh, it's kind of like form letters. Um, you can use define load is the same thing. Okay, so. Okay, now we're going to look at some compiler features. First of all, uh, the compiler can be invoked from inside code to with exe put s or exe printf, and uh, it it returns the value of the expression. Um, so, for example, uh, what this does is uh, mgetS is is will prompt the user for some text, and it'll malloc use malloc. So you can never have a buffer overflow, and then it invokes a compiler on what they typed, and then it uh, it'll print out that many asterisks, carriage turn line feed, and then it'll free it. So if we say two plus three, oops, I didn't do two plus three. We say two plus three, we got five asterisks. Or if we say uh, I sixty four J equals three J times two plus one. We got seven asterisks. Or if we come up here and we say I sixty four L equals four, then if, if we run it we say L plus three. We got seven asterisks. So uh anyway in, there's a preprocessor directive that will spawn that will jump to the shell shell to the command line and do some compile some statements and then it can put text into the stream being compiled so normally this is for static binaries but we're doing it on a just in time um, so this, it prints hello it prompts for some code and then it puts the um, code into the stream being compiled and uh, so if we say, uh, what is, goodbye, and we got hello, goodbye, and we didn't have a character turn line feed. Anyway, now, uh, it, it compiles statement by statement and executes. When it hits a function, it waits till it gets to the end, and then, it, then you invoke the function. So this is perfectly valid right here. Um, you can define u8 is a uh, character, and so we're defining a uh, an an array of characters. It looks like it's variable length, but it but it it evaluates it at the time it's compiled. It evaluates i at the time it's compiled. So that's how that works. Now, uh, so some tricks that uh, lose those uses is uh, it converts variables to uh, constants which makes them more efficient when the compiler runs so it's really easy to convert a variable to a constant um, now uh, the uh, the uh, we're going to do a color change, color red. Now the the compiler is invoked even on uh, 
is invoked on uh, document commands. So if I say red plus one, and then switch back, we, we toggled to plain text, now we go back to regular mode, and now it's purple, that's red plus one. Or if we, uh, if we say I64, let's say LL equals brown, then if we come up here, and if we say LL, now it's brown. So the compiler's invoked all over the place. It has it's it doesn't have much overhead starting up, so uh, it's used all over the place. Um, now, one thing I wanted to show is scoping. Uh, the compiler uh, this is the Adam task. He's the father of all tasks. You don't type on his window. He tasks inherit the symbols of parents, so if we say, if we make a symbol, th this will execute some code in atoms by Adam. So we say Adam, uh, let's say JK equals 6. We don't see anything. Now we have a variable that's system-wide. Anyway, uh, if we a regular variable is uh, just a, like a local variable, local environment variable, but that's like an environment variable for Atom, and uh, it's really elegant how startup works. All it does is it does like an autoexec.bat. It starts up, when it starts up, it starts executing this code, and these files uh, load symbols and code into Atom's tables, and then at the end of startup, it, it spawns some user windows, and those inherit all the symbols in Adam's tables. So it's really elegant.